All right, here's another quick uh, topology lesson for you guys. And today I'm going to show you how we can attach these types of shapes to a round surface like a sphere. So you can see that over here we have a couple of circles attached to this sphere. We have a couple of like a square kind of shapes sticking out. But we're also going to extrude them inwards so we can also turn them into holes, all right? Now I know what you guys are thinking. If you follow me, you probably saw a couple of my videos already where I show you something similar. This is basically the same thing, it's just a slightly different way to do it, so maybe it's a little bit more convenient to do this in some other situations. And if you guys like this type of tutorial for about the topology, let me know and I can make some more tutorials. And I got a guide coming out soon, so stick around if you're interested in seeing that. But we have a sphere over here, and this is not just a UE sphere. This is a cube which has been subdivided a couple of times, and then we use a cast modifier to turn that subdivided cube into a perfect sphere, all right? So uh, it works a little bit better because it's all perfect topology, it's all uh, quads, and we don't have any triangles, so it's going to work a little bit better if we're working with uh, topology very closely, right? So let's say we want to take a circle or a cylindrical kind of shape, and we want to attach that to this cube over here. And how are we going to do that? Now, the kind of classic newbie way to do that is use a, a boolean and to just attach that and use a, a intersection or a union between the two shapes and just attach it there. But you, if you ever try doing that, you probably know that your topology is going to be a complete mess if you do that, all right? So here's another very easy way to do that, all right? Let's say I want to go over here. Let's go to the top of our cube just to keep things simple, all right? And over here on the top of the cube, actually, let's go to the side of the cube over here because it's going to prove a point because we can do this at any angle, right? It's a little bit easier if we do it on top. And we're going to select this face over here, okay? And then over here, we're going to place our 3D cursor with Shift, S, and cursor to select it. And we're going to add a circle. And this circle needs to have 12 vertices. It's very important for now that we have 12 vertices. I'm going to show you in a minute why even though you can change this later. But for now, for this exercise, just keep it to 12 vertices, all right? And we're going to take this circle, which is now placed on this face, and we're going to fill that in edit mode, right? So now we have a full circle here. And then we're going to go over here to our snapping tools. We're going to enable this little magnet thing, and we're going to set that to, to, so that it snaps to the face, okay? So it snaps to the face below it, and we also have to play around with some of the settings down here. So you can see that I have a, a the align rotation to target checked, and I also have project individual elements checked. It's very important that you have these little uh, two boxes checked, all right? So now when you move this circle around this sphere, you can see that it perfectly snaps onto any surface which is below it, and it takes the same angle. So now this uh, circle that we have, once we put it on the surface of the sphere, it takes the exact same angle as the normal of the face below it, right? So it's perfectly aligned with any face below it, all right? As you can see, we can just take this face over here or any other face. And once we do that, we're going to scale this down. Now we're going to scale this down in such a way that it fits exactly in between nine faces here, okay? So you can see over here we have a face in the middle, and we have eight more faces surrounding it. So it's nine faces, and the reason that we're doing this is because if we have nine faces surrounding this uh, circle, we have exactly 12 vertices which surround it. Remember how many vertices were on the circle? It was 12, right? So now we can connect these perfectly and keep the good topology. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that, because right now we can see that over here on the side, uh, this circle still has some gaps between uh, itself and the surface of the sphere, right? So we're going to go here, over here and we're going to add a modifier and we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier. Now in the shrink wrap modifier, we still have to change a couple of settings, all right? We're going to set the target to this uh, shape that we have over here. We have to rename it to something. You can press F2 and rename this to anything you want. I'm going to name mine to sphere, all right? So now uh, with the circle selected, we're going to set the target object to sphere, okay? And we're going to set the wrap method to target normal project, all right? Now you can see that as we move this circle around the surface, it's going to be perfectly glued and projected onto the surface below it, okay? So we can move it in between any uh, any couple of faces. We can set any nine faces that we want to move this to. Let's say we want to move it over here. We can do that, right? It's also kind of important that we rotate this correctly. So we want to rotate it in such a way that it has the, the edges kind of aligning with the uh, top and the side. So the four edges on the sides are going to be kind of aligned. And we can do that by aligning our view with this uh, circle here, by selecting the circle in edit mode and pressing shift 7 on the number pad. And then we can just kind of rotate that a little bit so that we, uh, we can see over here that these edges are going to kind of align. We don't want it to be something totally crooked because then they're going to be connected in a weird way. So we want to try to, uh, try to kind of approximately get them smoothly connected, all right? So once we do that, we have this circle over here on the side of the sphere. We can just apply our shrink wrap modifier, all right? And then we can just uh, join these two objects together. So we select our circle, and then after that we hold shift so we can select the sphere as well. And we're going to press control J to join those two objects together, all right? We can also disable our snapping at this point because it's going to give us some trouble down the line. And now you can see that we have this circle perfectly inside or perfectly on the surface of this uh, sphere, all right? 
So we're going to now delete these couple of faces that we have over here around uh, around this circle. The easiest way to do that is to just select the face in the middle and press X and delete the vertices. And that's going to automatically delete all the faces around it. All right. And now the only thing we have to do is select this entire edge loop over here and the entire edge loop around this circle. And we're going to press W and we're going to press bridge edge loops. All right. Now, I'm not sure if this is part of the loop tools add on. If it is, then you might not have that enabled. And if you don't have that enabled, then just go to your edit and preferences. Find the add-ons menu and just type in loop tools and just make sure to enable that over here in the loop tools uh, add-ons. Okay, and that's going to give you some more tools. And I think the, uh, this bridge edge loops tool is one of them, but I'm not sure. In any case, now we connected these couple of edges. All right, so now we have this perfect connection between the sphere and the circle. And it's also, uh, it's also adjusted according to the curvature of the sphere, right? Because this is slightly curved. So now we can just delete this face or we can, we don't, before we even delete it, we can just extrude it in any, any direction like outwards. For example, right? We can also extrude it inwards, depends on what you want to do. In this case, we're going to extrude it outwards because that's going to be slightly different from what we did before. And now you're probably wondering what are we going to do about the topology on the top of the cylinder at the end of the cylinder sticking out here because now it's just a massive end gone with 12 vertices, right? So we have to fix that. And one way to fix that, which is actually quite nice, is we can delete this face. And we're going to select this edge loop, which remains after we delete, uh, delete this face. Now it's just a hole. We're going to go up here to the face menu. And we're going to click grid fill. All right. Now you can see the blender automatically fills in this circle with some nice topology. Uh, all of this are, is made of quads now. Now this is a little bit ugly. So we can play around with some of the settings down here in the grid fill menu and make this look a little bit nicer. For example, we can set this to two or three. And then you can see it creates a slightly nicer shape here at the end. And it's slightly more round and bent maybe. So it can give us a slightly better result if we play around with some of those settings. And now we can just select all of this and inset it so that when we add our subdivision surface modifier, we have a couple of extra edges to tighten these smooth edges a little bit. You can see we can also add a loop cut over here and just play around with this to make it a smooth and nice attachment to the surface. Right? You can see now when you zoom out, you cannot even tell that uh, there's anything weird going on. There's no shading issues, there's no artifacts, there's nothing strange going on here. All It's perfectly connected and the topology is still perfect, right? So that's exactly what we would want to achieve if we're trying to uh, connect a cylinder to a uh, circle. And we can do that from any angle at all. Now I'm going to show you another way to do this. We can also do the same thing with a different shape. For example, we can do it with a, a kind of more like a kind of cube shape like this. And the way that we can do that is we can just use a plane instead of a circle. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate for you guys as well. And by the way, I'm, uh, when I'm demonstrating this to you guys, it takes about 10 minutes to show how this works. But once you get the hang of it, you can do this with any shape in like less than a minute probably once you get uh, some practice in. All right. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to add a plane. Now we need the same thing. Right now we need 12 vertices on the sides of this plane as well. And we can't just subdivide it because that's either going to give us 8 or it's going to give us 16 or something like that. So instead, we can just add some loop cuts with Control R. So we can add two loop cuts on this side and we can add two loop cuts on the other side. Now we have 12 vertices surrounding this plane, right? Now once again, we're going to enable our snapping tool over here. So the same thing happens that this uh, plane takes the angle of the surface below it. And we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier one more time. And in the target, we're going to set uh, the object of the sphere. And we're going to set uh, the wrap method to target normal project. All right. Now, this is huge. So it also gets kind of deformed. And we don't want that. But again, we want to fit it so it fits in between uh, uh, nine faces. Okay. So something like this, you can see in wireframe mode a little bit better what's going on down there. Okay. So now we can apply the shrink wrap modifier. Again, just join this together. And then we're going to delete the faces on the surface of the sphere. And again, we can just select all the edge loops here on the outside of the plane and on the inside of this uh, circular or the square hole that we have on the surface of the sphere. And we can just bridge those edge loops one more time. And now we have the same setup as we had before, right? We can just, uh, yeah, you can see that something happened over here because we had some, uh, we had our snapping tool enabled already from before. And I think this is slightly below the surface. So we have to redo that a little bit. So we're going to undo a couple of steps and, uh, now this uh, modifier is applied, we're going to disable the snapping here, and we're going to join the two objects together. All right. So now we can delete this, and then we can just join this one more time. All right, bridge the edge loops. And we're going to take this and we're going to just extrude it outwards. And as you can see, it stays it, uh, as its perfect uh, square shape. And even the surface is bent exactly according uh, to the sphere. So it keeps the same curvature as the surface of the sphere, right. And now you can do anything you want with this, you can just inset some more faces here, and you can create a hole in the top which goes even further down, you can turn it into a well or something. And all the topology is perfectly connected. So you, any, any modifier you apply to this sphere is also going to be applied to this object, and it's going to work quite well. 
So that's how you attach some objects and think about how you can use this with some other stuff on your models. It's a pretty useful tool. And uh, if you guys learned something from this tutorial, let me know in the comments, drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.